The way you prepare your vegetables can make the difference between getting powerful benefits for your genes and getting none at all. I am Dr. Lucia Aronica, lecturer in epigenetics and nutrigenomics at Stanford University. Today, I'll show you the fascinating science of how to activate hidden powers in your food with the right preparation. Three proven tricks to boost garlic's power by over 4,000% and game-changing hacks for broccoli, kale and Brussels sprouts that most people get wrong. And stick until the end for a surprising revelation about how often you actually need to consume these vegetables. It's probably not what you think. Before we dive deeper, let me share something fascinating. Many foods contain special compounds that I have named epinutrients that can communicate with your genes and support their healthy function. The word epi means on the top and these nutrients can control molecular switches that sit atop your genes and turn them up or down. By doing so, they can activate health-promoting genes like those that help you burn fat and fight against infections while turning down those that make you sick, like the ones that increase chronic inflammation and accelerate aging. Some of these epinutrients are readily available in foods, but others, and here's where things get really interesting, are a bit like glow sticks. Do you know those light-up tubes you might bring at concerts or camping? When you break them, two compounds mix together, starting a chemical reaction that creates light. In the same way, certain vegetables only produce their most powerful epinutrients when you chop, chew, or crush them, allowing different parts of their cells to mix. The timing and technique of this mixing process are everything. Get them wrong and you might miss out on thousands of percent of the benefits. Two of the most powerful examples of these glow stick vegetables are garlic and broccoli. First up, garlic, an Italian staple. It contains allicin a powerful epinutrient that awakens genes that protect you from oxidative stress, inflammation and aging. But here's something shocking. The garlic you eat hardly ever contains allicin. Why? Because allicin is only produced when you cut, chew or chop garlic allowing a compound called allylene to mix with an enzyme called allinase. But here's where most people go wrong and lose most of the benefits. Heat kills allinase and no allinase means no allicin. It's like breaking a glow stick but destroying one essential chemical. That's why if you want to maximize garlic's power, you need to follow these three crucial tricks. Chop or even better, crush your garlic first. Wait five minutes. This increases allicin by an astounding 4,200%. Think of it like the glow stick activation time for garlic and then either saute it in oil not water for just two minutes or add it raw at the end of cooking 
Now that you understand how to unlock garlic's power, let's apply the same principle to another family of vegetables, the cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale, cabbage, cauliflowers, arugula and mustard greens. Just like garlic, these veggies work exactly like our glow stick analogy. Where you cut, chew or chop them, you allow a compound called glucoraphanin to mix with an enzyme called myrosinase. This creates sulforaphane, a powerful epinutrient that supports your genes. Think of sulforaphane like the boss of your own antioxidant army. Unlike direct antioxidants like vitamin C that work alone and last just a few hours, sulforaphane turns on your body's own antioxidant, detoxification and anti-inflammatory genes. And these gene boosting effects last two, three days. The research is impressive. Sulforaphane can boost DNA repair by 30%, improve detoxification of air pollutants like benzene by 60%, and even protect us from certain types of cancers. But there's a catch. You could miss out on all these benefits of sulforaphane if you prepare these vegetables the wrong way. Just like alinase in garlic, heat destroys myrosinase, the enzyme we need for sulforaphane production. That's why to maximize the benefits of broccoli and other cruciferous vegetables, you need to follow these essential tricks. First, chop your vegetables 40 minutes before cooking. This gives time for sulforaphane to form. Then lightly steam for just two, three minutes. And if you want to maximize the benefits, try broccoli sprouts. They contain up to 100 times more sulforaphane than fresh broccoli. Just one to two ounces of broccoli sprouts provide the clinically effective dose of sulforaphane. Now, you might be wondering, how much do we actually need? Studies show we need about 20 to 30 milligrams of sulforaphane to reap its gene boosting benefits. This translates to roughly half a kilo to one kilo of broccoli, quite a substantial amount. That's why broccoli sprouts are such a game changer. With only one to two ounces providing the clinically effective dose of sulforaphane, you get the best bang for your buck. But if broccoli sprouts aren't your thing, here's another trick. Mix things up a bit by combining two, three ounces each of broccoli, Brussels sprouts, arugula, kale, mustard greens. This flavorful mix provides the same sulforaphane boost. And there's even more good news. Since sulforaphane's gene boosting effects last for two, three days, you don't actually need to eat cruciferous vegetables every day. Just incorporating them in your meals every two, three days is enough to maintain these amazing benefits. Now you have discovered these powerful kitchen tricks, but this is just the beginning. I have prepared a free guide with my top five kitchen tricks to unlock your food's epigenetic superpowers. Click the link in the description to download it. And if you enjoyed this video, don't miss my next one where I will share my top secrets for maximizing the benefits of tomatoes and olive oil. 
hit subscribe and the notification bell to catch it. I'll see you in the next video.